Tune in Thursdays from 3 to 5 p.m. to catch the top figures in the D.C. jazz scene right here at WPFW, serving the needs and collective imagination of the community. Good morning. I'm Faye Williams, your host here on WPFW FM 89.3. This is Wake Up and Stay Woke. And remember, for today is Dr. Kiyanda Smith. Dr. Smith, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Wonderful. how are you? Oh, I am blessed and highly favored. Happy hearing all these uh, techniques for getting rid of some of the stress that I feel every day and that I'm sure many of our listeners do, and we just want to do more research. And so we're bringing you on so that you can sort of put the icing on the cake for us. I know that you've had 15 years of experience in the innovative application of education, accessibility, and health care education to support operative and pragmatic transformations for various sectors. And we want you to tell us a little bit more. I understand you're a law student now? Yes, I finished my PhD a few years back. I just felt that I was missing that one little piece. I had started law school years ago before I went into health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to switch gears and I said, I'm going to go back to it. And so I decided to pick back up a few years back and I graduate this year. So I'm done in a few months. Well, you know, you and I are kind of alike in that uh uh, in that way, uh, I did a law degree first and decided I wanted to do some other things, and I've been blessed to earn PhDs since I left <laughs> school. So don't, don't worry, you can get there. I mean, it just takes you, you do one and you say, oh, I can do that, and then you just keep going. So yeah, I know, I want, Dr. Wigger, they, they've been <laughs> broke in the process, but I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, well, it kind of puts you behind in terms of uh, what your other classmates are doing in law, whatever, out there making all that money, but you're still being in service to the people. So we're grateful for that, too. Some of us have mm-hmm. to do it, but we get rich in friends and, 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 you know, and the things, the experiences that we have. So congratulations for doing all of this work, and I know you're doing wonderful work now, so tell us a little bit more about what you do for the last decade, it's been a digital accessibility and digital health mm-hmm. for higher education as well as some corporate and federal clients as well. Mm-hmm. But the focus is mainly on equity and ensuring that mostly digital products are accessible mm-hmm. to everyone without regard to your ability. Mm-hmm. We don't want to have any exclusive barriers or challenges that would prevent anyone from interacting with any type of digital product mm-hmm. that different a little from accommodations or disability, which a lot of people get accessibility and disability kind of mixed up. Mm-hmm. We don't focus on, on people who are differently abled. Our focus is on everyone, on everyone in, in the universe. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's, that's what I'm making sure, and, and that's where the digital equity or digital gap comes into play, mm-hmm. uh, as well as our diversity and learning and thought diversity also is a big part of that. Mm, okay. So th- this is your life's work now. Are you planning to go back and get some more PhDs or some more degrees? You know, I just like studying. I don't even have to get um, a degree in order to, to study. I just studied diplomacy and protocol during COVID. And I think people who found a way to do something like that, not necessarily protocol or diplomacy, mm-hmm. but what the kind of work you do, stress management, etc., because all of mm-hmm. us needed that. And even even today, I'm listening to uh, the three of you who are on this subject, and it's wonderful. I hope we have a lot of listeners today and who will take heed to some of the things that you're suggesting. Um, it's, it's so important for us to uh, be happy with the life we have. I know that sad things happen in our lives, but we have to mm-hmm. overcome them if we're going to be productive. And it uh, looks like the three of you have found a way to do that. So as your life's work, I assume this is, and focuses on digital accessibility. What, tell me the difference um, briefly, if, if there is one, between accessibility and disability again. Okay, so... The difference between accessibility and disability is accessibility is proactive. Mm-hmm. So you can better understand the difference between making something accessible mm-hmm. or if you're going to provide an accommodation, which mm-hmm. is for disability. So mm-hmm. imagine that you're a college instructor or professor, a, a student who's differently able with their hearing. They want closed captioning in mm-hmm. order to access your video or your lecture recording. Mm-hmm. Well, 
that is not an accommodation, even though we all make, have turned it into an accommodation, mm -hmm. that is an accessibility issue because your videos and lectures should already be closed captioned because not only could those who have unique abilities benefit from digital closed captioning, but maybe the mother who's in the kitchen holding the baby cooking and want to listen to your lecture or someone who's in a coffee shop and can't turn the volume up, they just want to read the lecture or they just want to hear it without having to actually see it. So you use certain words that are non-directional, like you don't want to say look here or over there to your right, use certain words to make it accessible for everyone, especially people who might be driving their car. Because we are such a transient economy right now, we have to accommodate and that includes those who are of lower socioeconomic status, so we have to take into account poor internet connection, scanty internet connection, the ability to download your items. The list could go on. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, how, how does, um, wonder why did you focus on digital accessibility, uh, inform diversity, equity, equity and inclusion? Instead of, um, well, did you do see, think about social justice and civil rights mm -hmm. as you were working on um, on these subjects? Well, I mean, yeah. And the thing about diversity is, I noticed as a, I'm a former college professor, which is what I was doing before I got into accessibility, is there were some students who weren't differently able who were having issues accessing some of our digital products, mm -hmm. and that's what where the equity inclusion, social justice areas came into play because think about diversity as the practice of including many communities, right? Their identities, races, ethnicities, backgrounds, abilities, culture, beliefs, mm -hmm. and equity is, is consistent, it's systematic, it's fair, just, it's, a, it's impartial of mm -hmm. everyone regardless of your ability. And then inclusion is when we recognize and we appreciate and we use your ability and your skills to to help us navigate in a digital environment. So mm -hmm. I very rarely use the word disability because I believe all abilities, even those who are unique, we can benefit from and we can look at things in a different way. So I chose accessibility because I'm more interested in the design, the construction, the architecture, mm -hmm. uh, the development and the maintenance of the facilities, the information communication technology that a lot of our uh, lower socioeconomic or those who are in our digital desert. And I'm also interested in the services we provide to those people. This in also includes those with unique abilities. We want them to be able to fully and independent utilize and access technology, right, without an accommodation. Well, you know one thing, Dr. Smith, I, I, if I were really vain, I would say you were probably one of my students. Everything that you've ever named, uh, starting with your law degree, your PhD, your social justice, your civil rights, all of that, those are things I'm interested in. Being a college professor, I've taught law uh, at, a, at a university. So we're just almost like twins, but I'm sure you're much yes, younger. you were speaking earlier. I was like, wow, um, <laughs> he's really saying a lot of things that when you're talking about the way you're stressed, it's taking on too much too many things. I was like, oh my goodness, she sounds just like me. Um, yeah, you de we definitely have a lot in common with that. Um, I was like, her her life must look like mine. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm learning things, though, from all of you this morning in terms of handling it, because it is stressful. You do all of that. It is stressful. Uh, sometimes it's a, a positive stress. You, you know, you're doing really, really great things, and you're getting accolades, but then sometimes you think you're doing really great things, and you're not getting accolades. Nobody's saying thank you. In fact, somebody's working against you, but you mm -hmm. persist. You continue to go on because you do what you believe uh, should be done. Now, I want to ask, um, is, is there a common issue that you're experiencing that may demonstrate the lack of awareness or wakefulness or, or failure um, you know, in, in organiz within organizations? Well, believe it or not, since we are talking, it is stress month, Mm -hmm. What I've noticed or what my biggest thorn on my side is <laughs> missing alt text on images. It's something so small that we think of, we don't even think it is important, but it causes a lot of stress, right? For people who are trying to get an assignment in or they need to access some information they can't because they don't know what this is an image of. If, if you don't tag your images so simple, especially if the image is meaningful, 
people who are utilizing assistive technology, like screen readers, like JAWS, things like that, they don't know if they missed something. Because what it may say, it may say, you may say image. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I'm, if I'm definitely able to envision and I'm like, well, what is that an image of? Do I need to know what that image is? What is that? Now I have this acute stress, right? I don't know what I just missed. And now it's not an equal experience to everyone else. So this is just a very common accessibility issue. It is not a disability issue. It is not an accommodation. There are several tools out there. And I get offended when I have professors come to me and say, well, I have a student who has an accommodation for alt text. And I'm like, what? <laughs> they should not have an accommodation for it. They should never have to come to you and tell you that they're disabled, especially if it's cognition, like mm -hmm. a student who has ADHD or something. They should not have to dispound this to you. That's, that's their personal business. That means your, your curriculum is not accessible. We need to fix your curriculum. We don't need to make an accommodation, right? Mm -hmm. So that some, and also low color contrast. I did not realize how many individuals cannot tell the difference between a yellow and a red or a green and a blue. Uh -huh. huge, huge percentage of the population, when we did a research study with uh, one of the organizations, I, I'm with Sigma, we had did a research study on people who could tell the difference between different colors. Oh, my goodness. I was blown away. 68% of the people got different answers. Well, you know, and I, I understand that, that that is a challenge for many men, that they, they can't tell the difference yes. in colors. But you, are you suggesting that it's also uh, common for women? It's not common for women, but it, in our study it showed and it, it insinuated that it's not mainly a male issue. Mm -hmm. It's a issue that has really crossed genders. And it's not because the women are considered colorblind, but it's also because the women may have been older in age. They may have been having cataracts, may have been using an older monitor. For men, that could be the same thing in addition to being slightly colorblind, which a lot of men are. So, yes, more men answered a different color, but we also had a large percentage of women that also could not tell the color. So if you put something really big on your website to say, hey, look here, I have something here, and you put it in red, there's going to be a large percentage of people who are not going to see it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we've been talking about a lot of things. For those of you who are just joining us, this is WPFW FM 89.3, and this is Stress Awareness Month. We've been talking with three wonderful sisters, um, and they have given out their websites, so you can contact them later. But we need to get that information from you, Dr. Smith. How uh, Do you have a website, and uh, how would people reach you? Oh, absolutely. It's uh, www.kmsmarysmithphd.com. My PhD? I'm uh, just kmsmithphd.com. Oh, Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just my name. <laughs> okay. kmsmithphd.com. Yeah. phd.com. Okay. Absolutely. You know, some of you have all these fancy websites. My, my I, just I my name dot com. <laughs> mm -hmm. I try to keep it simple. Okay, well that's that's good enough. Uh, we we're just about running out of time, but we want to go to a couple more questions. In 2016, uh, Dick Gregory shared with uh, as you know this program is in remembrance of Dick Gregory. Yes. But uh, Dick Gregory shared uh, with someone that all of his activism related causes are his favorite. Considering this. Um, which accessibility cause, um, it, it, what is it? What's at the top of your list? Well, due to the changes in innovation, technology is at the top of my list. For example, about two years ago, Google built out Chrome's uh, visual accessibility features, and it's a search engine feature that borrows machine learning technology from other Google products to better recognize information within the unlabeled images because they have such a problem with people labeling their images. Google now is saying, hey, we're going to use machine learning to label the images for you. Don't mean it's going to be right. We're going to try our best because you guys are not doing the best as, that you can. I believe this innovation in assistive technology can go over to a lot of 
other things such as our LMSs, our learning management systems like Blackboard, Canvas, and also websites, any website that you have. You can use AI to automatically tag those images. Believe it or not, that technology doesn't exist. Word does have that, yes. How terrible is it? It's only about 30 to 40 percent accuracy rate, so it's not mm -hmm. that great. Chrome has done a wonderful job at that visual accessibility feature, and I really see that innovation as coming across all different levels of technology for everyone to access it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, again, uh, De Gregory expressed that he was shocked regarding the 1954 U.S. Supreme Court decision in Brown v. Board of Education. As, as a law student, um, mm -hmm. PhD researcher and accessibility activist and all those things, which mm -hmm. landmark case impacts your work the most? Oh, you already know Title II, the Americans with Disabilities Act. <laughs> that, that requires, you know, public institutions to ensure that you, they, that communications with uh, persons who are differently able, that they are just as effective as communication with anyone else, aside from causing any type of financial undue burden. And then they went ahead and took it a step further when technology really hit hard in the U.S. Department of Education and the Office of Civil Rights. They consider the term communication to include the transfer of information over the Internet and any other electronic means. And that was the Obama administration, and he named this clause, um, it was Regulation 42505, and he, he named it uh, Information and Communication Technology Accessibility, which is our Information and Communication Technology Resource Act. Uh, so now the uh, Americans with Disability Act of 1968 has also gone a Further, 40 years later, and we've taken that word communication and we made it fit what we need so that we can ensure that everyone is federally covered by law to make sure that everyone, the equity, that's that equity part, we want everyone to be able to access it without regards of ability. Well, I want to congratulate you for having something to do with developing that federally supported uh, Americans with Disability <laughs> Act uh, technology and revision. You've done so much, and you sound so young. I just want to uh, compliment you, congratulate you on the work that you are doing, and I hope that some of our listeners will take advantage of the information you've given out today. And, uh, again, just let our listeners know how they can reach you uh, quickly before we go. Sure. It's at www.kmsmithphd.com. Well, we've certainly had some wonderful guests today, and I hope that all of you will stay around and you will listen to uh, my good friend David Whetstone with For the People as he comes up in just a few moments. I want to thank uh, Cheryl for being our first guest, Cheryl Gray Hines, and then, of course, you, Dr. Keanu Smith, and we had Brittany Denise White. We have certainly had a lot to go on today uh, this Stress Awareness Month, so I hope you, our listeners, will take advantage of the information you've learned here on Wake Up and Stay Woke and that it will be of benefit to you. We try to bring you the best in information and we hope you take advantage of some of it. Uh, the webinars that are coming up with our friends uh, that they talked about on um, uh, awareness, um, stress awareness and what you can do. I certainly have learned a lot. I hope you have. We'll see you next week. Love all of you. Thank you very much. WPFW, building a better world, one broadcast at a time.